In this video, I'll show you how to collect data on a large number of events in the life of a stock. We'll start off showing you how to collect data on dividends and repurchases in Morningstar and Yahoo Finance. And then I'll show you how to collect the same dividend data. And then I'll also show you how to collect data on stock splits in Bloomberg. Next, I'll show you how to collect data on not only spin-offs, but also any merger in the life of any company in the US or outside of the US. And then finally, I'll show you how to collect data on repurchases and any other event in the life of a stock using Bloomberg. So let's get started. All right, so there are several resources you can use to find data on dividends and repurchases. Uh, Yahoo Finance will have a limited amount of data on dividends. Morningstar will probably be your best free resource for data on dividends. And then finally, Bloomberg is going to have the most data on dividends and repurchases. So let me walk you through, we'll start off with, Blue, with Morningstar. So if you want to access Morningstar, I would recommend going through the Ball State libraries. That way you have a full subscription to the website. If you just try to log into the website or search the website for some company by yourself via a search engine, you're not going to get the full range. You'll probably only get a trial version. All right, so I'm over here in Morningstar and we're looking at information for Ford Motor Company. And if I scroll down here, you'll see a lot of information on fair value, financials. If I go down here far enough, we will actually find information on dividends and stock splits by Ford. So you can see the total dividends per share paid out over the last several years. So here's the total dividends per share Ford paid out in the last year. So 60 cents, 60 cents. Uh, it was a little higher in previous years, but the five year average is about 59 cents. It's dividend yield. And remember the dividend yield is annual dividends divided by the market price per share is fairly high. I mean, it's, it's one of the highest of the large, regular, well-recognized firms. I mean, 6%, 6%, 5.88%. Uh, average annually. And then you can also see the percent of shares that the firm bought back. So this is the repurchases of the firm in recent years. So in 2019, Ford bought back approximately 0.62% of its own shares. We can also see whether the firm engaged in any stock splits. And yes, yes, it did. In fact, the last split occurred on August 3rd, 2000. It had a one for one split, uh, but the one that they had prior to that was a two for one split. So if Ford's share, share price was, let's say $10 prior to the split, at the end of that split, you now had two shares of Ford for $5. All right, so that's Morningstar in a nutshell. Now I'm over here on Yahoo Finance and I've searched for Ford again. Now Ford, relatively speaking, has a lot less data than Morningstar or Bloomberg. So you can get a sense of the, the firm's say forward dividend and forward yield. Uh, so that's about all you get on the main page. But if you go over to the statistics page, We'll go down to the uh, dividends and splits. So trailing annual dividend yield, that's just the total dividends over the last year divided by the share price. Uh, let's see, payout ratio. We're missing that data for some reason. Likely because, for, actually, that would probably because, be because Ford had a negative income. So anytime you see a, uh, an NA for a payout ratio, that's probably because we don't report payout ratios when the firm has negative net income, which is what's going on here. It had negative diluted earnings per share. 
Uh, we know their next dividend date, their next X dividend, or their the most recent X dividend date, their most recent dividend date, and we know essentially some information about the last split that they had. All right, now let's try getting dividend and stock split data from Bloomberg. So there's two functions I want to show you. The first will be the DVD function, and that's just the function for looking up dividends and splits. And then I'll show you how to use the financial analysis function and search for dividends. So let's get started. So I'm in Bloomberg and I'll just type in DVD and I believe I already have Ford loaded. So yes, up here I have Ford and if I were to change that, I let's say we change it to Tesla, we could look up Tesla if we wanted to, but I'm more interested in Ford just to keep things consistent. And you can get a sense of Ford's 12 month dividend trend. We can get a sense of their 12 month yield. That number should look fairly similar. Uh, we know the firm's last share price. And then these are all of Ford's regular quarterly dividends. And oh, this is a big deal. That explains a lot. They discontinued their dividend on 319. That is, for a dividend paying firm like Ford to discontinue a dividend, that is a big deal. Uh, the, for, the firm also issued a 13 cent special cash dividend on this date, on 3 1 2018, and then it's in the past issued several special cash dividends. Now, if I expand the range by just increasing it or going back to 1985, I can actually scroll all the way down here and see the all kinds of other actions. So, for example, they had a spinoff in 2000. They also had a spinoff in 98. And down here in 1994, you see that stock split, that two for one stock split that we saw earlier. So I can see a little bit of information about it. I have the, the announced or dec, uh, declaration date, the X date, the re record date or date of record, and then finally the payment date. All right, next I'll show you how to get dividend information off of the financial analysis tool. So I'll go to FA. And if I go over to the income statement, just by going up to IS, I can get a sense of the firm's dividends and dividends per share. So down here we have their historical income statements. So here's the last 12 months income statements. We have the income statement for fiscal year 2019. And if I go down here, I will be able to see dividends per share. Uh, so these were the dividends per share, the annual dividends per share. As you can see, it lines up with what we saw in Morningstar and what I provided you in the previous video. All right, now let's talk about where you can find information on spinoffs. The problem with spinoffs is that like other M&A activity, in order to get access to that data, you're probably going to have to pay some money unless you have access to Bloomberg. So I'll show you how to do it in Bloomberg, but I don't really know of a, another good resource that's free that you can use other than, say, newspapers to get some, some basic information about M&A. Uh, you can look at regulatory filings, I suppose, but uh, there's no one database that you have access to. I mean, the if you did have access to it, I'd say SDC would probably be the best one, but yeah, no access. So let me show you what we have available in the Bloomberg terminal, and that is the MA function. So if I go up to the blue bar and just type MA, I will see mergers and acquisitions. And I can search for just about any type of M&A activity I could ever hope to find. Uh, so let's go up to advanced search and I'll go down to deal type and I'll be able to search for literally any corporate action, any M&A activity I could possibly want. If I want to search for 
repurchases. I can do that here. Uh, in this case, I want to search for spinoffs. So I'll check the box and I will click update. And in Bloomberg's database, it has 3,383 different spinoffs. So let's go ahead and see the results. So here are the spinoffs that have occurred most recently. Uh, I can go ahead and click on any of them. We'll say this one that's actually been completed. So we can see when it was announced, the X date, uh, when the, the parent firm's shares started trading without the spun off entity. And then here we have some data. Tama Wood LTD announced the spin off of S Enterprises Sys LTD. And we know some other information. We have the timeline, we have some of the parties that are specified. Uh, so we know the ticker symbols, we know the market cap of the parent company, we know the shares outstanding of the spun off company, which is over here on the right. And we have some news, no news on this one. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about where you can find repurchase data or buyback data. So I've already shown you where you can find that in Morningstar. It's just in the dividend section. So let's pass by that. Let's see how we use the MA function to get data in Bloomberg. So again, I'm going up to the MA tab here, MA. And I'll click on advanced search, go to deal type. And up here at the top where it says buyback, these are our stock repurchases. Click update and we have about 2,900 different repurchases. And here we have them. Uh, so going back, well, let's say, let's look at completed repurchases. So let's say, oh, Rosneft, a classic. So in this case, Rosneft, which is a Russian oil giant, is announcing on 5 12 2020 that it will be buying back its own shares or it is or it has bought back its own shares and it bought back its own shares at five cents per share and here is the total dollar value of those shares bought back actual number of shares bought actual number uh, actual dollar value of shares repurchased so the ma function is a powerful tool for buying back for looking up share buybacks all right, now I'll show you one final function, and this function is really the end-all, be-all for looking up any event in the life of a firm. It's the CACS function, corporate actions. With this function, you can look up any action type you possibly could want. So, for example, we have some information about Ford and one of their loan covenants. We can see that Ford has announced that it's forming a joint venture with some firm. Uh, now we can sort this into, let's say, dividends, or just, just by checking a box, we can see that the firm is has discontinued a dividend, and it's also announcing something here. Oh, I suppose that is a, oh, it's a new quarterly dividend for its preferred stock, not its common stock. All right, well, let's uncheck that. So if I go up here to action types, I should be able to go up to capital change. And here I can go down to, oh, well, I could see mergers, I could see a rights offerings, I could see spin-offs as well, but I'm more interested in share buybacks. So I will add that and click the selected actions box and close. So Ford has not bought back any of its shares in the selected dates. Let's expand that. Maybe it's bought back shares prior to that. And yes, it has. On 5-7-2014, Ford bought 
116 million shares on the open market. So there we go. And if you wanted to change the action type, you could look up dividends, you could look up stock splits, uh, literally anything we've talked about in this class. If it's a, a corporate event, it's going to be able to be searchable in the CACS function. So let's recap. Yahoo Finance and Morningstar can be used to collect information on several stock events, primarily dividends, repurchases, and stock splits. However, the best resource for you is going to be Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg will have information on just about any type of corporate action. And to demonstrate that, I showed you the DVD, the FA DVD, the MA, Mergers and Acquisitions function, and the CACS function. Really, the CACS function precludes the rest of these. I mean, you can look up any type of corporate action in the CACS function. DVD is for dividends and stock splits. FA DVD will give you some ratios. And MA will allow you to look up any M&A activity that the firm has experienced. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.